Let's bring in Stephanie Link of Hightower Advisors. Stephanie, also, of course, a CNBC contributor. Um, it's great Steph, to see you. Yes, you too. And uh, a familiar story, I yeah. guess, one way or the other, right? That the market kind of gears up for perhaps a little bit of daylight uh, from the Fed. Maybe we can see the destination where we're headed. Uh, Jay Powell says not so fast. Th that being said, today didn't feel like an all-out uh, run for the exits, kind of rotational. How do you read it? It's a confusing time, Mike, right? We're in this choppy trading range. We've been talking about it all year, 3,600 to 4,200, right? I mean, I kind of thought yesterday when we got the statement, I think all of us were breathing a sigh of relief because it did all of a sudden introduce, hey, we get it. There's a lag impact to higher interest rates by about six to nine to 12 months. So while we're, we don't, so that was the good news. And yeah. then we heard from Powell and no pivot, no pause, higher rates, higher terminal rates. I mean, across the board, you guys have been talking about it all day. And here's the thing. I mean, they can be hawkish because the job market and the job data that we keep getting every day this week has been actually strong or stronger than expected. We had initial claims today down 27% on a four-week moving average on a year-over-year -year basis, right? On top of jolts, on top of ADP, uh, all of that kind of thing. And at the same time, so since jobs is okay, and that's one of their mandates, they're now focusing on inflation. And they're behind the curve because I don't care what we say. It could be peaking at this point in time, but it's still awfully high. I mean, look at the unit labor cost numbers from today at 6.1% year-over-year. And even in the ISM prices paid numbers, which I think you mentioned earlier today yeah. a couple of times, that's actually now at 70.7. .7. So going in the wrong direction. So they need to be hawkish. We just don't know the outcome. That all being said, we didn't, I don't think we collapsed today because we know a lot of these things. The market's down 19 percent. Sentiment is really negative. And seasonally, yeah. it's a good time, especially after midterm. So I kind of think we're going to slosh around here, unfortunately. And it's going to be certain sectors that do better, as you guys, as you guys just talked about, uh, in terms of value over growth. Yeah, the S&P did finish uh, all of a maybe half percent above the, the early morning lows, so yeah. really not too much of a victory. But, yeah, the typical stock did better. It really has been uh, more intense selling pressure in the biggest growth stocks. It just doesn't seem like they've, they've found that level uh, where they've gotten sold out. Um, now, we could say the overall market holding up when mega cap growth has underperformed over the last three months by 20 percentage points or something like that maybe is is a net positive but for how long for certainly short i mean like look com services and tech is 35 percent of the s p 500 just by definition that tells you that they're still over owned energy even with the rally mike is only five and a half percent of the s p 500 however add in financials which have held in add in materials industrials and then healthcare, which is its own animal right kind of defensive and that kind of offsets those these technology groups and that's the good news Right, and I think I think the, 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 the names I just mentioned, the value sectors, they are starting to get popular. Yes. But still, I think there aren't a lot of believers because energy would not be five and a half percent of the S and P 500 if people actually believed. Yeah, it is a tricky time because even if you think, oh, the industrials start to act pretty well right here, yep. it seems like there's beatable earnings estimates. You're still in a, in a game where the Fed seems to believe they need to engineer much more of a slowdown in the broad economy oh, yeah. before we get where we're going. Absolutely. And so between now and the end of the year, I want to own those cyclical groups, the value groups. The industrials, we just talked about, have the pricing power. And that's and they've had surprisingly decent earnings, right? Energy, we talked about great earnings, great free cash flow. But sometime in 2023, I'm going to use the pivot word. We're going to want to change because we're going to see a lot slower growth in 2023. I don't know if it's a recession or just slow growth. Yeah. But that's when you could see potentially the rotation back into val uh, into growth. This is the answer to those who, who say, why does the market put, you know, set itself up for, like this all the time? It, it continues to have kind of the, the triumph of hope over experience and, and get excited. But because there's going to be a time yes. when the leading indicators of inflation actually show up in the numbers. Yes. And the Fed's going to be speaking hawkishly until the minute that happens. <laughs> right. And so then the market's going to try to get in front of it. Right? I would think that the market's going to get in front of it. Every time we get a, a, a better number on inflation, it's still high, but a little bit better. You kind of start to see the growth stocks rally. But then and they peter out. And I think that people are selling the news instead of buying the weakness. And that's what's different in this part of the cycle. For sure. Uh, high equity exposures by uh, investors coming into this phase probably is part of the reason for that.